I first became interested in uh, engine turning, the guilloche work. In the 1980s, when I looked at the Daniels book on watchmaking, there's a chapter on engine turning. So this fascination with engine turning drove me to, to look more into it, research it a bit more, you know, who was using it, which companies, equipment, the machines itself, a little more about them. And that drove me in the 1990s into actually hunting down, finding a Rose engine. You know, I was so interested in this work that I wanted my own machine, even though at the time I didn't know how to use it, just knew some of the basics. So uh, actually found the machine, purchased it, uh, and started to play with it. The machines themselves are almost mystical, you know. Once you use them, they almost take on a life of themselves. When you're turning, your hand cranking, you know, the rosettes are turning and you're cutting, uh, all the little adjustments, when everything's working just right, uh, it's quite magical, really. And then you see that beautiful work appearing before your eyes. It's one of the most satisfying things um, I've ever done. And the machines themselves, I, I certainly love them. You know, all the machines that we have are very special to us. So it's, it's amazing to have something that can create such beautiful work that is so large and heavy, you know, so, and doing this very small, delicate work. The uh, straight line machine, instead of having rosettes, it has straight pattern bars. And instead of the machine going in a circle or turning in a round fashion, it goes up and down. So it's creating patterns, uh, straight line patterns, that the lines aren't necessarily straight. They can be curved, which they normally are, but they're going up and down. And it's riding that touch piece, instead of riding on a rosette, that touch piece is riding on a pattern bar as it goes up and down. And most of the adjustments are quite similar. You can offset the pattern bar from the work. You have that same carriage and slide with the cutter and the guide. Um, so uh, many of the functions are very similar. And they often, um, dials have work from both types of machines in the same dial. Not all, always, but often uh, you're using both machines uh, to create something. The rosettes, those uh, discs with the different patterns on them, uh, are really what help us to create the patterns. There's a touch piece, a metal touch piece. Um, there's different types of them that we use that actually touch the rosette. And the rosette is leaning, one rosette is leaning against that as you're cranking or hand turning the machine. And that's making the entire head of the machine move back and forth as that touch piece travels around the rosette. The next thing you have is the cutter. Our hand is on a slide, and on the end of that slide is the cutter. So you need to press with a consistent pressure. And as you push the slide into the work, what happens is the cutter then will touch the work the guide will also touch the work and control some of the depth. And as you're turning, then it starts to cut. And that process, now you're starting to cut, your rosette's turning, touching the touch piece. You're holding the slide, and the cutter and the guide are touching the work. And you're hand cranking the machine. Now you're cutting a line. That geometric line is appearing on your work. To start the next line, next to that one, we need to move everything over. So there is a, a carriage that this slide is on, 
And what we do then at the end of that, there is a ratchet. We in which we can then that is also has several adjustments on it. We will ratchet that sometimes once, sometimes twice, could be more depending on the pattern we're creating. And that is moving the entire carriage that the slide the slide piece is on that holds the cutter and the guide. That's moving that over at a precise measurement. Now the next thing that we can do to adjust the pattern is there is an adjustment on the back of the rosette barrel where we can turn those rosettes either forward or backwards in relation to the workpiece that we're cutting which will offset the next line. When you're using the machine, when you're actually doing the cutting, you want to keep things consistent. So normally the speed of, of cranking is fairly consistent, the pressure on the cutter is consistent. You, you want to make sure that there's no big deviations that could show up in the work itself. When you're using the Rose engine, it, it's like I said, it's it's really quite magical. You know, here you're using this big, heavy cast metal machine, yet it's driven by your hand and little leather belts. And, and when everything's working right, you know, I, I, I can honestly say there's nothing more enjoyable than watching this machine create something beautiful. Like with any handmade work, it's very special. There are people who try to mimic it with other processes, with uh, stamping or, or printing a design or things like that. Um, but real guilloche really sets itself apart by the way it reflects light. The reason for guilloche in RGM is strictly because I love it and it's a passion. That's the, that is the reason that it all started. And that's why we do it. When you look at the finished product and it, it's, it's beautiful. You look at that watch and you see the gorgeous dial on it or the main plate is beautifully guilloche. You know, that's the reward.